Good morning. Christmas is getting closer. Today is December 20th and uh, Christmas Eve will be here in just four short days. We are continuing to ask the question, why did Jesus come? And today we're going to delve into the fact that Jesus came to save. Christmas Eve is going to be very special this year at Hyde Park Presbyterian Church. We are putting a tent up in the parking lot at the corner of Willow and Swan. It's going to provide an outside environment for us to worship together, provide extra space to accommodate those under these special circumstances so that we are going to be under a tent. We're going to worship. We're going to praise. We're going to celebrate the birth of our Savior. We're going to light candles. We're going to let our light shine into the community that desperately needs to know that we are a church celebrating the promise of Christmas. We're going to have three services during Christmas Eve. Four o'clock is going to be kind of a family friendly service. Six o'clock is going to be our traditional Christmas Eve service. And finally, 11 o'clock evening service. All of us are going to be under the tent at four and six and 11. Can't wait to see you all there. Blue Christmas is Sunday, December 20th at 6 p.m. This is a great opportunity for those who are not necessarily feeling that joy to the world, Merry Christmas, but perhaps during this COVID season is, is brought up that loneliness that comes from feeling not merry and bright, but perhaps a little bit blue. That's gonna be at six o'clock. That's going to be outside under the tent as we gather we enjoy the time together. We celebrate those who maybe we've lost and remember this Christmas season. opportunity that we have to go to God in prayer. So wherever you are, just open your hearts and let this prayer be your prayer. Lord of time and hope, we are rushing headlong into the Christmas season to come. Our calendars, our phones, our reminders are, are telling us that we only have so much time before Christmas Day arrives. Be with us, Lord, in the panic. Throughout all the projects yet to be done, the people yet to be reached, the preparations, and all the things that we miss this year, the things that we have done in years past that we don't get to do this year are a pause to remind us that this is not surprised to you and that you are still God. 
be with us as the, the nights grow longer and the darkness grows. Be in our minds. Lift our spirits. Advent and waiting this year also has taken us to new worry and new conflict. We have watched this pandemic unfold in so many ways. It has taken so much longer than we ever could have imagined, and yet you are not surprised. But you are the time and light. You bring us hope. You've always guided us with your voices throughout time, with the great prophets, and now through the one who is to come, Jesus Christ. Remind us again what this season is truly about, that it is a reminder that love and hope and peace and joy are coming. Calm us in these Advent days till Christmas. Slow us down. Help us to remember that it is in your loving relationship that you gave your Son to us. And in that loving relationship, your word is carried into the hearts of the people. Not through the cards, not through the tinsel, not through the ribbons. You have given us eternal light to shine and to guide our path. Shine your light into the hearts of your people today, Lord. Bless those dear ones whom we name in our hearts before you today. Prayers for healing. And we lift up those who need healing. Prayers for reconciliation. Prayers of your comforting presence. Prayers for love. Give strength to all who face conflict. Let your compassionate light shine and guide all of our decisions. You sent your Son as the Prince of Peace who forgives. Remind us in this time of prayer to come to you and to ask for forgiveness and to know that we are forgiven. Help us to share that forgiveness with others. Bring us into your light of hope. Pour out your love continually upon us. These prayers and hopes we offer in confidence and gratitude of your love and your presence. Let us now pray wherever we are to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My name is Brian Altsbaum, and I'll be reading from the New Testament books of Matthew and 1 Peter. Please join your hearts with mine in prayer of illumination. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us in the waiting, the watching, the hoping, the longing, the sorrow, the sighing, the rejoicing. 
Speak to us by your word in these Advent days and walk with us until the day of your coming. Amen. Our scripture for today comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 1 and 1 Peter chapter 1. Matthew 1, 18 through 21. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man, unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, concerning the salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace and was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated. When it is testified in advance to the suffering destined for Christ and the subsequent glory, the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God.
the journey of Advent is all about expectation leading up to Christmas and all the anticipation. All of the world wants to put different pressure on why this time matter, but I want you to kind of consider why are we waiting and why is all of this necessary? And the bigger question is why did Jesus come? And we've been answering that all on our journey to Advent to say that Jesus came to heal, Jesus came to judge, and today we're going to talk about how Jesus came to save. And we've been talking about this journey and how Jesus came to save, and we hear so much in the Christmas text leading up to it, and we hear from Matthew 1, 2021, how an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you'll give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. God saves, and we need saving. It has been God's intention throughout all time to do the saving. If you look back at the Exodus story, you hear that God heard the cries of his people in need of a savior, and he sent Moses to save the people, to lead them out of Egypt, to lead them out of exile, but it was kind of a short-term solution. The problem is, is that the saving didn't last, that Time and time again, you see this pattern unfold of God's people being saved and giving thanks to God that they have once again made it out of whatever calamity befell them. But then they get comfortable, they take their eye off of who God is and how God came to save, and they find themselves in yet another mess and another need of a Savior. And we get to Jesus Christ, we find somebody who taught time and time again of his desire to seek and to save the lost. Just in Luke 15, you hear about three things that get lost and they get found. First, a sheep, then a coin, and thirdly, a son. Time and time again, the prophets said that the Messiah would come and save us. John 3, 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The promise of a savior. Time and time again, this promise of a savior comes up. When we look out the window at the broken world that we live in, we are reminded that we need a Savior. We are given this kind of promise of a Savior and the scope of work of the Savior in the new creation. In the past was this incarnation of what was called the first fruits or a new community that is found in Christ and found in the book of Acts. But a new saved creation of a Jesus who came to save. In the present, we have this dominion where the gospel rests on all of us, that we have this good news that Jesus Christ came to save us, and we get to share all of these things, that we are in the process of being saved that it is kind of a work in progress. It begins first and foremost with understanding that you need a Savior, that you're not going to be able to get right with God and, and, and right with other people without the intervention of a Savior. The problem of sin and how it continues to break apart relationships and distort our relationship with God and distort our relationship with other people we need God's saving grace to get right with God and to get right with one another. That this journey of being saved 
it's what the promise of the journey of Advent is really kind of all about. The good news that the angel shares with Joseph, the good news that we hear, the good news that got the shepherds to run to the manger. We keep hearing the good news that we've been saved, that the problem of sin has been solved. And so what do we do? How do we respond it? We respond, I think a lot of us, is that we kind of ignore it. We fake it. We buy the stuff. We bake the cookies. We go to the parties, but it doesn't really take root in our hearts where the good news is called to be. I don't want you just to ignore the good news here in 2020. It is my hope that perhaps it becomes the storyteller moment that I talk about Sunday in and Sunday out. That you might share the story of God's salvation. That perhaps you might sit with the shepherds this remaining couple of days between now and Christmas morning that you might Listen to what the angels are saying. Glory to God in the highest. The Savior has come. The shepherds had a front row seat to hearing the good news. And what did they do? They acted on it. They heard what amazing story the angels had to share with them. They went to the manger. There is baby Jesus. There's Mary. There's Joseph. And what are they doing? They are telling everybody who they've rousted and awoken by coming in out of the fields to the miracle that they saw. The good news was on the move even then. Don't ignore it. Don't let it pass you by. Don't fill it with things. Fill it with the storyteller moments of what this promise means to you. We have been saved. Or maybe it's going to take a little bit longer that maybe you need to consider that that after Christmas journey of the Magi. Again, the, the wise men show up Not to a little tiny baby Jesus in a manger as we love to see it all in the cards, but it took a little longer for the Magi to arrive and to once again confirm to the hearts of Mary and Joseph out there on that limb that they were on the right path in the right journey. They needed a Savior. The wise men come and they give homage the king of all kings. Maybe it's a long journey for you, just like it was for them. But these are your opportunities to respond to the good news of the Savior. Not to let it pass you by, but to let be Christ be born in you in this amazing Christmas 2020 year. Perhaps, like Mary, you could cry out that my soul glorifies the Lord. Rejoice in the Savior who is mindful, who is merciful, who has heard the voice of his people and has come down to deliver them. Come down to save them, not in a, in a temporary, just fix it for now, but for fix it for all days. You can let it pass you by. You can fake it. You could sit with it like the shepherds. You could storytell her about it around the campfire. You can do the long-term journey like the Magi, or you can let it light your soul ablaze like Mary, or even like Simon. Simeon, who held the child and praised God, he waited his entire life for this moment. He finally got to see the consolation of Israel and he threw the confetti and he just let it fly. Yes, God the Savior has appeared. For those of us who are a little bit more outgoing, we could be more like Simeon or we can be more like Mary. We can be scholars of the stars like the Magi or storytellers like the shepherds. 
but Jesus, God saves. He saves us personally. He saves us together as his people. He saves his creation. God saves. Open your eyes to the good news that first and foremost that you need a Savior and one has come for you and for me and rejoice in it. Amen. Sunday the 20th you only have a couple of shopping days left to really get into sharing the good news the storyteller good news that Jesus came to save so go from this time to go and share your storyteller moments go and share the good news that Jesus saves go in the name of the Father go in the name of the Son and go by the power of the Holy Spirit and as one church we say amen <music>